had Jared Goff when he was just a pup at Cal. And he has turned this program into an off in one year into an offensive machine. Sonny, it's interesting. Um, I watched Brian Kelly's first year offensive guy. Very good. Lincoln Riley's first year. Very good. Your first year. Very good. I would think it's next to impossible to bring in an offensive system that's brand new because it's so sophisticated, a new playbook and work. How did you simplify it? How do you offense? By the way, Harbaugh, to his credit, Michigan first year, won 10 games. How did you get it rolling so fast? Because you had a whole new system. Yeah, you know, Colin, we were lucky. We had uh, we walked into a situation where we had a quarterback that had experience. You know, Max Duggan had yeah. been starting quarterback here for for really three years, kind of off and on. And you know, we felt like we'd coached against Max when I was at, at SMU. And so we felt like Max was a, a guy that had a lot of talent, maybe that hadn't reached his potential. Um, and, you know, the thing that Max gives us is an ability to run the football. And when your quarterback can run the ball, yep. then, then that allows you to, uh, to be a little bit more simple in your, in your pass game. And so, um, you know, that's a game changer when, you, when your quarterback can make the plays that Max can make with his feet. So it allowed us to, to be maybe a little more simple, not rely on, him throwing the ball quite as much and, and try to be a little bit more balanced of a team. Yeah, well, you did wonders with Jared Goff, who's not a runner, so you can obviously make multiple guys work. So you're going to you're gonna face Michigan, and just my uh, uh, amateur you know, eyes watching this, I said about two weeks ago, I said, boy, I don't know if TCU matches up in the trenches with Michigan. They can score on Michigan. What When you look at Michigan's personnel, are you concerned that they can bully ball it pretty effectively? Yeah, you know, honestly, Colin, I think anybody that plays Michigan probably is a little bit concerned of that. I mean, they're, they've got a really good offensive line. I think it's the strength of their football team. Um, you know, they're big up front on both lines of scrimmage. Um, you know, they've got three tight ends that can jump into some 13 personnel and do some kind of interesting things from a run game perspective. You know, they'll play with six, seven offensive linemen at different times. So you can tell that they want to run the ball. Um, you know, their quarterback has really played well. Uh, he's made a bunch of big plays for him. But but they're gonna they're they're a football team that wants to run it and they really do a nice job of staying patient yes. with the run game um, and you know they can they can push people around and so that's going to be the big challenge for us is stopping the run and, and make the quarterback beat us and he's certainly capable of doing it but uh, but but you know we've got to we've got to stop the run because that stops their offense yeah you know you had Nick Foles uh, you have Max who you made him a Heisman finalist you had Jared Goff we were just talking about Jared Goff that when he's got a good old line and a clean pocket, he throws a beautiful football. Did you know instantly with – I think you had him as a freshman, if I remember, did, didn't you? What, did you Did you know instantly, oh, he's going to play on Sundays? You know, it's funny. We played Ohio State like week three of his freshman year. We were bad. I mean, we, it was kind of a rebuild. We were 1-11 my first year at Cal, and it was, it was, it was challenging for Jared. He was having to start as a, as a true freshman. We didn't have a lot of players around him. You know, the thing I learned about Jared, though, week three, we played Ohio State, and I bet he got hit 30 times in that game. <laughs> and Jared's not the biggest guy in the world. You know, he's, he's kind of a tall, thin guy, but he never blinked one time. And that's I remember coming out of that game thinking, man, this guy's a pretty special player. Uh, he's got a chance to be a really good one just because of his toughness and his ability to stand in the pocket, see down the field, uh, distribute the ball to guys. And, and the great thing about Jared, he just got better and better every year. Came out after his junior year, ended up being the first pick in the draft, and has had a really nice NFL career. Well, um, uh, everybody's talking about C.J. Stroud as a pro, but I, I look at Max Duggan, and I think to myself, well, quarterback's got to move these days, not to make you an NFL scout, but it feels like he can play at the next level. Do you think he has success on Sundays? I do. I really do. I think I think Max is one of those guys that is going to continue to get better and better. I don't think Max has gotten near his ceiling yet. You know, he's a really, really good athlete, ran sub 22, 200 meters in high school. He's got great speed. He's got good size. He's physical. He's very, very hardworking, got a blue collar mentality. You know, he's got that ability that great quarterbacks have of making everybody around him better. You know, when he walks into the huddle, he's got command. Everybody respects him respects the way that he plays, and it makes everybody around him better. So I think Max is going to be one of those guys that goes in the NFL as a backup for a couple of years and some at some point gets an opportunity to be a starting quarterback. And I think he'll continue to get better and better and better as he moves forward. And he's 
he's got a lot of potential. He really does because yeah. he's made a huge jump from last year to this year. So I'm excited to see what he does when he gets to the NFL. Yeah. You know, um, you had Gronk at Arizona. You recruited him out of high school in Pittsburgh. We love Gronk. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't nearly that. I remember in college at Arizona, he wore a goofy number. You told me in the break it was 48. When did you look at Gronk at Arizona and go, oh, my, oh, my, we, we may have something really sp- – I mean, did you ever see all-time top five tight end? Did you see any of it? Yeah, you know, you saw a little bit of it when you recruited him, just his size and his athleticism. You didn't really know how he was going to develop into a pass catcher. He didn't do a lot of that in high school. Um, and so we got him, you know, probably two or three weeks into fall camp. You knew you had something special. You know, you had a really big guy that had um, the hands of a wide receiver, yeah. could run like a like a wide receiver. But the thing that Gronk had that made him so different is you could put his hand on the ground and he would go and block like an offensive tackle. I mean, he was really physical. He loved to play physical. You know, most of those guys, if they're good receivers, they want to catch the ball and they want to stay out of the mix uh, from a blocking perspective as much as possible. And he never, he never turned that down. I mean, he always – wanted to block, he wanted to be physical, he wanted to go in there and, and knock guys around, and he just loved to play football and loved to practice, and so you could tell pretty quickly this guy was going to be something special, and you know, it's pretty crazy, he only played 18 uh, college football games for us at Arizona, got crazy. hurt going into his junior year and missed the whole year, so he, uh, I, I knew he was going to develop into something special, and I think he probably exceeded everybody's expectations. Okay, so TCU takes on Michigan next Sunday. TCU's had one loss. It was an overtime. It was a wild. All your games are wild. Every TCU game is crazy, folks. They don't play any boring games. Uh, by the way, Garrett Riley, uh, Lincoln's brother, is your offensive coordinator at TCU. Uh, I think he won coordinator of the year in college football, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Won the Frank Brawls Award as a top assistant coach. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's a, he's a bright young coach. You know, reminds me a lot of Lincoln. Lincoln was on the staff at Texas Tech when I was there, and Lincoln started as a student coach, ended up being a graduate assistant, worked his way up, and I think replaced me as a wide receiver coach when I left and went to Arizona. So, uh, you know, Garrett's got a lot of the same qualities. They're very smart guys, uh, very organized, very methodical in their approach, and you know, Garrett's got a really bright future, and we're excited that he's here at TCU with us. Well, they had a defensive coach. Now they had an offensive coach, and they pivoted seamlessly. TCU's not going anywhere. Um, they take on Michigan. There's going to be some points scored. Can't wait. Sonny, good luck to you. Congrats. You have crushed it right out of the gate there, which is one I've had friends send their kids to TCU. They all love Fort Worth. Got a West Texas feel to it, and I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you having me, Colin. Yeah, you know, it's a special place, great university, love Fort Worth, excited about our program, and we think that we're just getting started. We think we can be a team that competes for playoff bursts year in, year out, so we're, we're fired up to be here. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.